So as Jesse Colombo would say, Tech Bubble 2.0 is here, and it is popping, as you can see with LinkedIn and Splunk and uh, Tableau and Twitter. Uh, it is we're about to see the the crash of of some tech stocks, and it may be happening over the next few years. We will see how long this tech bubble, or I should say, tech burst happens. Maybe it won't be as bad at first. Maybe it will. Who knows? But it does bring up a good question. How can we as individuals, or if you want to start a company, or if you are a company, how can we be immune to these economic bubbles? Or these bubbles? Okay? So, like Jesse, I actually began my career in 2008, I believe. And it was the heart of the deepest part of the recession. And to say that it was difficult to get a job or, or switch jobs or, or anything was is an, is an understatement. Um, and it's funny because since 2008, I pretty much have worked two jobs or three jobs or sometimes four jobs since then. Um, in fact, I have people tell me all the time I need to get a life, or, which is funny because it's, it's, you know, it's like you need to get a life. Like well, if I'm breathing, eating, and sleeping, then I, I think I have a life. Um, but I do work, and I work a lot. And I guess, in a way, this is part of the reason why I think I, I really, um, really get what Jesse says a lot. And you know, even though we've only interacted on Twitter and email, um, his stuff is just solid because uh, he he's had the same experience. You just that's what that's the world that you started your career in, um, and there were no opportunities to say the least at the time. On the flip side, like the Great Depression generation who went through that, you learn something very quickly about that experience that nobody else has if they were, you know, if they got a job in good economic times. And that is number one, um, what real problems am I or is someone else or is an organization or a business solving? Okay. Imagine that we all had pancreatic cancer, which is pretty much 100% guarantee that we're going to die. And someone comes to us and says that if we pay them $100, they will cure it. And this cure is legit. Like it's not a fake cure, it's a real cure. How would we react? I mean, $100 is nothing compared to death, right? <laughs> a sale is anything that someone doesn't need. A solution is not a sale. And the person doesn't feel misled, even if there is a cost to a solution. If the problem is big enough, it doesn't matter what the cost is, right? Problems will never cease to exist, which is good, right? They will always be around. They will always um, be prevalent in our world. Identify a problem. The bigger the problem, the better. And you'll have a strong customer base. Or, again, work for a company that solves real problems. There's a corollary here, which is like, for instance, let me give you an example with oil and commodities. Commodity companies are taking a beating right now, right? I mean, you just are getting throttled. Um, and I'm an investor too. I love to invest. It's one, it's one of my favorite things to do on the side. Um, and part of that, again, is you know the economic recession <laughs> that happened in 2008, 2009. Uh, just, that, was, that was another one of the, the only opportunities for my generation, the millennial generation at the time. Uh, but... As a case in point, when Newmont Mining was taking a beating because gold prices had plummeted, you know, this last, what was it, uh, the fourth quarter of 2015, I mean, they just, man, they, they, they were able to reduce costs huge amounts and uh, earned quite a bit of money on, uh, what was it, their price-to-earning ratio, at least when I bought it, was eight. I mean, eight. And you have these tech stocks like LinkedIn, which in my opinion are completely worthless at 250 that these investors are piling into, like a bunch of morons. And, um, and look at where Newmont Mining is now compared to you know, these stupid tech stocks that everybody's been throwing their money at. You know, that's a great example of a company that is, they, they had a huge, huge amount of adversity, but look at how they responded. Excellent, right? And I, I love companies like that. I'm watching uh, Rio Tinto right now because commodities are taking a beating. They're taking a throttling. But what, what is Rio Tinto going to do? What is BHP uh, Hilton going to do? Like, what are these companies going to do? How are they going to respond? If they respond well, right? They get that debt off their balance sheet and then they start buying 
these mines for pennies on the dollar. They will do well in the long run. Not right now. It's not going to be a great time to be a mining company right now. But they have a good future ahead of them, okay? Um, if they're conservative with their resources. Solve real problems, number one. Number two, how are you acting in your good times and how are you acting in your bad times, right? Tech companies that don't solve real problems will always be susceptible to bubbles. Likewise, companies that spin like crazy during good times, often at the first of the year, if they're spending money from January to, to April, they're probably headed for bankruptcy in the long run. Machiavelli states it is a common defect in man to not make any provision, provision in the calm against the tempest. Okay, what's the most difficult thing to do during good times? Discipline. What's the most difficult thing to do during bad times? Joy. Right? Here's a question. How, as an individual and as a business, can you achieve both during those times? That will say a lot about your company or your individual character, right? Again, I, I use Newmont Mining as an example. There's a reason why they're a great, great American company. Uh, they really responded well, and we'll see if they continue respond to, responding well to this bust. But if if you do well in your bad times, and you're able to really reduce your cost and to sacrifice, as hard as that is, and even, I'm sorry, sacrifice in your, your good times as well, as hard as that is, it's so easy to blow money. I can, I can assure you that if gold prices continue going up, I'm going to be watching very carefully how much money they're spending. Or are they going to be retaining a lot of that, getting ready for the next round of bad times? It's coming, right? If that is mining were to take off. Same thing with tech. These tech companies that are blowing money like it's going out of style. So strategies to become immune to bubbles. Number one, identify problems that need to be solved. Choose bigger problems. Okay? I say choose bigger problems because bigger problems, it's not a sale. It's just not. It's not at all. I think healthcare, I've said it in another video, is going to be one of the greatest opportunities for, for the next round of millionaires and billionaires. I just do. I think it is. Um, you know, like what Theranos is doing with, with blood, if it's legitimate, and that's a huge if, but I, I would totally, totally use that a lot. And the reason is because you would be able to spot medical problems very quickly. Um, there's all kinds of opportunities in healthcare. Um, number two, exercise discipline in the good years. The bad years are coming and will often be equal to the to the good years, right? Now, if, you, if you've been uh, conservative in your good years, if you've been careful in your good years, the bad years aren't going to be as bad, right? And the bad years may present you with an opportunity. And then third, incentivize the people who, number one, make your business money and or two, save your business money. Fundamentally, making money or saving money is a proof of concept, Right? It's the same thing with like using energy as an example. If it takes more energy to use than you get from it, then it's not sustainable. The proof of concept failed. It's the same thing with profits. If it costs more money to produce than you make, the proof of concept failed. That's all money is. Yeah, I, people who say money is evil or capitalism is evil, they're wrong. Money is only a proof of concept. That's all it is. Right? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And money fundamentally will tell you whether it works or not. Okay, it's not evil, it's not bad. It just, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If you can't make money from it, if nobody's buying your product, that is proof that your product doesn't work. That's feedback from the market. Doesn't work, the market doesn't want it, right? It's like if you go on eBay, e eBay is the greatest market, in my opinion, in the world. My favorite market of all. But if you go on eBay and you try to sell something and nobody buys it, then it's proof that the market doesn't want that. I mean, eBay is the ultimate free market. It's, better, it's even better than the stock market, <laughs> you know? And it's because you can validate very quickly whether people want to buy what you're selling or not. If they don't, there. Right? So it's a great market. So incentivize the people who make your business money or save your business money, right? Because they are validating your proof of concept. As an investor, I'll wrap up with this. I'm only going to invest in companies that incentivize their best employees. There's no reason that a CEO should be making 300 times his average employee or her average employee. None at all. I want to see these companies incentivize people who are saving them money by giving financial rewards. Don't, don't tell me about your extra vacation time or how you patted them on the back or gave them an award. None of that matters compared to financially incentivizing those people. Okay, And so anytime I vote my shares, I'm always going to be voting for the, the, the top 50%, 60% of employees to be receiving raises and the top 10% of those to really be receiving raises. 
right? If you're able to save companies money, in my opinion, if I was running a company, the amount of money that you save the company, you would be getting 50% of that back on your check. You saved us a million dollars, you'd get a $500,000 raise that year. Because let's face it, that's just awesome, right? So if you're a company and you're watching this or you're a part of a company watching this, how are you incentivizing people who are helping your institution, your company make more money or save more money? Because they're validating your proof of concept. And fundamentally, you've got to reward good people. That's how you keep good people.